Um, but today I really want to touch uh, four areas. Really what we have been doing around school strategic plans uh, to increase uh, you know, the success there at Warrington, what we're doing independently, I'll share that. I'll share some actual data with you, um, data from PM1 to PM2. I'll share some NWEA, that's um, our other metric for assessment that we use, um, which we actually track prof uh, projected proficiency and we also track uh, growth. Um, and you know, this is coming back a year where we will have a lot of growth. Um, for our students, talk about what we're going to do to drive to the finish line and then really just talk about some of the community connections that we are uh, making there. Um, so there's two big initiatives that we are just focusing on. It's rather to focus on a few things and do them right than do a 10,000 things. And, and the first one that we knew we had to do as soon as we walked through the doors um, was, and actually it's not this slide, it may be, in, uh, it, it was left off this one, uh, but it really it was around uh, school culture. Um, our, our ed model is around the conditions for learning. The conditions for learning have to be optimal in a school for this next initiative, which is tier one instruction to work. Um, and so we've poured in into the um, school culture. Um, we, you know, with our uniforms, with implementing CHAMPS, which is an initiative where students really, um, we, we help them understand what rules are, what consequences, what it, uh, positive um, uh, interventions are when they do the right things. Um, and just building the culture and the morale of our students and our teachers, that has been the number one goal. Um, and so that's what we've been striving to do. Um, I just visited not too long ago, um, and uh, one of the pictures that was on the slide uh, that was left off was, you know, you walk there, the building is still immaculate, it's clean. Students are in lines walking to the cafeteria uh, in uniforms. Uh, say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, hello. Um, and so those are the type of things that we're teaching them and helping them understand. And once that culture is there, then we can get to the main pieces and that's instruction. And so we've been dealing uh, heavily with that. And then the second big initiative is around tier one standards-based instruction. We have to get tier one correct. Uh, lots of students in the school are tier three, but can we get tier one instruction before we get to tier three? And so that's what, what we've been doing um, specifically with our education model. And some of the things that we started to do immediately is professional learning communities. Get teachers together talking about the data that they see and what they're doing individually to build their lesson plans to actually impact instruction kid by kid and so it was a novice idea for some of our teachers they hadn't seen that before they hadn't written lesson plans before so we had to start there and we've been pouring a lot into that we've differentiated our professional learning some teachers are ready to go to do um, uh, you know to, to start with technology to really start small groups to do whatever it may be we're letting we're letting them go and teaching them where they're at and then the other teachers that where they're at we're differentiating and helping them understand the data so our data um, and our professional development is really based on the teachers that are there and it's been a, a, a big haul that has been one of the biggest things the learning curve for the teachers here at, at Warrington um, we've supported our teachers' understanding of what, what is rigor, what is a task, what is an activity, how do we get the students to really understand what you're teaching them. That's been um, a, a, a big learning for them and really getting to the benchmarks. We've done a lot of small group instruction. There's no way uh, when you teach uh, 20 students, 18 students in the classroom, how do you know if they're learning it? Put them in small groups and get to the core. What do they know? How can we have them grow? And then we've implemented school-wide instructional strategies that is best practices across the board like text, uh, like text strategies, reading text, writing. Um, and so that has been uh, some of the many things that we've been doing there. Um, our academic focus, we are very data-driven. We use data for instructional software. We're using data of NWEA, PM1 data, and that is driving our instruction. So we've done fast progress monitoring, NWEA, and we've done software, um, we're using data. Some of the data that you can see from PM1 to PM2 percent on grade level using our new scales, you can see that we are up in each category, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. You see the numbers there of how many students are in the um, uh, denominator. Um, and we're up across the board. I mean, we are showing um, for, uh, for uh, proficiency. Remember this proficiency, we are showing growth. Um, I like to show this projected proficiencies, um, and we do that based on NWEA. And based on NWEA, you can see the projected proficiencies, um, and a lot of data on here, but I, what I want to kind of point out is if you look at the overall reading, um, it's 26%. If you go back to uh, previous years, we're up 3% for the last two years. It was 21% in 21, 22, 23, and now we're projected to be about 26. So we are showing that growth in proficiency. Um, we see in science, we're a little bit down. In math, we are um, right about where we've been the last few years. And in civics, we are up. And then in learning gains, um, 
learning gains, that's coming back this year. That's where we're going to, this is, these are the buckets where we're going to make a lot of impact. And you'll see the growth here at Warrington because some of these percentages are almost 10, 20 to 30 percent higher than they were two years ago when we had last uh, learning gains at Warrington. Don't have a lot of time, but I can dig into data. I'm a data nerd, but I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to move on. Uh, drive to the finish line. Um, what we've done is um, we took this data um, by pro projected proficiency and learning gains by student and sat teachers down and said, here are your 28 kids. This is where they're at. This is how many points they need to move after a learning gain for proficiency. How are we going to get them there? And so they're owning it, really tying their instructions and their lesson plans to the kids, not to an entire class. And that is helping our data chats, our uh, teacher-led professional learning, our student incentives uh, we're doing for attendance. We, um, that's a big thing for us, getting all the students there tested. Um, that was a big concern in our last PM1 to get our kids there. We did meet the threshold, but getting kids on the day of testing is, is part of our finish line. Tutoring before and after school, we continue to do it on Saturdays, and then really uh, blasting off a, a testing pep rally to get students ready for testing. What does it look like? What's the environment, and why are we doing this? It's not just a test. This is for you. This is for the community, helping them understand that. And then our community connections, we continue to have the partnership with the Navy, uh, the, the military base there, Advanced Star Base 2.0. They are working with about 20 of our students um, bi-weekly coming to our campus. Um, we're excited to launch a... Um, a weather balloon uh, with them here soon with the students. And um, it has, has been a great program thus far. And our parent universities, we have to bring the parents along with uh, our students. We've had five par uh, four parent universities already with over about 100 parents and community members there where we're helping them understand what it is to be successful at Warrington, a um, lot of things of how to uh, give them resources for um, improving and you know, helping themselves within the community and helping themselves within their child at Warrington. And we have our last one happening in June. And with that said, um, I know my time is short, so that is a quick, uh, a quick recap, and I know you may have questions. i would be happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Rees. Members, any questions or comments? Yes, by Sheriff Petty. So I uh, appreciate, uh, Dr. Ruiz, thank you for this update. Um, I'm starting to see reasons to, to be optimistic here, which is, which is good. Um, and, and congratulations on getting these PM2 scores up. And I, I imagine once, um, once you, I, I don't know if the culture work is ever done, but once you get the culture right, I think we'll start to see even an accelerated progress level. Is that? Is that fair? hundred percent. The culture work there is a day by day. We take a few steps forward and we have to, again, reteach and reteach, but uh, it'll, take, it'll take a few years to get that culture work there, but we're definitely moving in the right direction and, and you can feel it when you're on that campus. A couple of questions, Mr. Yes, for sure. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I think part of getting that right too is, is the students understanding that the culture is in fact going to change and that changes will be uh, carried, carried forward. So there's probably a little bit of a testing period there where they're pushing back a little bit on some of the new rules. Have you, is that accurate? In the beginning, we had a lot of pushback on the uniforms from our parents, but we stood strong and said, this is what, our, this is what we are, this is who we're about, and our parents really just conformed, and we haven't had any issues with that anymore. Discipline has really, um, I think at one point, we were referring over 150 kids to the alternative centers. We've done 16 um, this, uh, up to this year, so discipline has uh, decreased um, significantly from those that we uh, you know, have to have off campus based on the student code of conduct in Escambia. I mean, they're, they're getting the idea that we're not going to give up on them. And they're going to make some mistakes, but we're not going to, uh, you know, they may have consequences, but we still love them and we're going to help them grow because that's why we're there. 